the Met Gala was this week uh, on on Monday, marking the exhibit, uh, the opening of the exhibit, Camp Notes on Fashion. Uh, RuPaul, <laughs> what is camp? <laughs> what is camp? I will tell you, most people don't understand it because camp, you have to be able to see the facade of life. I'm gonna get philosophical up in here. Do it. You have to be, your, be able to see the, the, uh, the absurdity of life from outside of yourself. So the idea of drag is camp because we're saying, you know, um, I'm not this body. I'm actually, I'm actually God in drag playing humanity, right? So when you are in that place, let the church say amen. amen. When you are in that place, then you can laugh at the absurdity. Susan Sontag, an exceptional writer, filmmaker, philosopher, teacher, and political activist, wrote her famous essay, Notes on Camp, in 1964. Camp is a term that had not been clearly defined, but was popularized by figures such as poet and playwright Oscar Wilde. Though camp is not easily defined, Sontag set out to explain the term through her essay compiled of 58 points. Now, we don't have time to go through all of them, but let's discuss a few. Camp is a mode of aestheticism. Camp is not natural, but artifice. Camp is love of the exaggerated. Camp sees everything in quotations. Camp is the triumph of the epicene style. Camp is the attempt to do something extraordinary. Camp is failed seriousness. Sontag mentions a few representations of camp, such as Art Nouveau, Swan Lake, the National Enquirer's ridiculous headlines, and King Kong, the 1933 version. This is a great segue into film. So how does camp relate? Well, first we need to discuss realism and formalism in film. Realism is a concept defined in its name, meaning how realistic is a movie? Are the characters and events believable? Historically based films, such as Schindler's List, easily follows realism, as the director can't really change the main events, place, or costume design. Other films like Rocky aren't based off a true story, but the story is believable because a struggling boxer finding success could easily happen in real life. The one I love is a mind-twisting movie about a couple who comes face to face with copies of themselves. Although the storyline is highly unrealistic, the filming of the movie creates a sense of realism and you can't tell the couples apart. Movies who attempt realism and ultimately fail are usually categorized as camp. Formalism allows for more creative freedom in film. The Blair Witch Project is a great example of this. By stylizing the lighting, sound, editing, and set design, they trick the audience into believing they're watching real footage of horrible events. The artist is stylized to look like a silent film, very fitting for the time period it's set in. Scott Pilgrim vs. The World's use of motion graphics give the movie a comic book video game feel as Scott Pilgrim must battle the seven evil exes of his new girlfriend, Ramona Flowers, a very formalist film. Campy films are almost always considered formalist films as well. Okay, you might be a little confused, so let's play a game. I throw out some movies and you tell me if they're camp. Welcome to, is it camp? The Rocky Horror Picture Show, a musical about an innocent couple who stumbles upon the castle of Dr. Frankenfurter, an alien transvestite disguised as a mad scientist. What do you think? Yeah, it's definitely camp. Child's Play is a horror film from the 80s that follows a serial killer turned murderous doll named Chucky. Camp? Yes or no? Yep, this is camp. How about Carrie? A shy 16-year-old girl with telekinesis powers and an overly religious mother, who ultimately gets set up to be pranked at prom by the popular girl. Hmm, yeah, I'd say it's camp. Okay, two more. How about The Evil Dead? A film about a group of kids trapped at a demon-ridden cabin in the woods, filmed with some not-so-believable special effects. Come on, it's camp. Charlie and the Chocolate Factory is based on the story by Roald Dahl. The movie follows poor Charlie Bucket and a group of bratty kids with the opportunity to inherit the chocolate factory owned by the famous Willy Wonka. If you answered camp, you're absolutely right. All right, that's all for Is It Camp? Thanks for playing. Many things in the world have not been named, 
And many things, even if they have been named, have never been described. One of these is the sensibility, unmistakably modern, a variant of sophistication, but hardly identical with it, that goes by the cult name of camp. A sensibility, as distinct from an idea, one of the hardest things to talk about. But there are special reasons why camp in particular has never been discussed. It is not a natural mode of sensibility, if there be any such. Indeed, the essence of camp is its love of the unnatural, of artifice and exaggeration. A quote from Susan Sontag's Notes on Camp. I hope after watching this video, you hold a better understanding of camp. If not, you just might take life too seriously. Life is ridiculous and entertaining. The same goes for film as well. Both in obvious and subtle ways, camp has brought new appreciation to older films and transformed into a genre of film especially popular today. Why do we watch movies? Because we want to be entertained. Understanding the meaning of camp is an accomplishment in itself, but it also opens your mind to new ways of thinking and viewing things around you. Under camp, there are virtually no bad movies. So relax, humble yourself, look around at the ridiculously absurd entertainment around you.